This is my P1P, I got it a few months ago and it's great, I've printed loads of stuff on it but it doesn't have a cover. Dust is building up, I've noticed. If it gets into the bearings, if it gets into the motors, it can cause some extra wear and tear. I've come up with three ways to cover the printer. I encourage you to comment below the ways that you've thought of doing it or if you've done it yourself. I will say, please be really careful because the printers obviously get to really high temperatures and if you're gonna cover it, then there's a chance it could catch fire, so just be careful. And lastly, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. So the first way that you can cover your printer, this isn't too underwhelming, but it's literally the plastic sheet that the printer came in. As long as either your printer is coming soon or you've just bought it, or you kept the packaging from when you did buy the printer, if you were careful enough that you don't have too many holes in it, this should be fine to cover your printer when you're not using it. Luckily, this plastic sheet still fits on even with a spool of filament on the back. This is gonna be fine if you want a cheap and easy way to keep the dust off of your printer. The second way I've done here to cover your printer is also fairly cheap, but it's a lot more complicated to do and a bit more time consuming, and that is to sew your own fabric cover. This is the fabric that I used. It's just a single thin piece of fabric, but I have the receipt and it only cost me £5.17 to get all of the material to cover the printer. So this is a great option, especially if you already have a sewing machine. It's just a simple cube at the end of the day. So these are the measurements I've taken of the printer and it accounts for room on the back for the spool of filament and uh, it's quite a loose fit. That translates into this drawing, which is what I'm gonna sew. And then we've got a seam allowance around the edge of about a centimeter and then these are the two cuts I've got to make. This will cut down and then we'll add them on either side. L, S that side so I don't get confused. Voila, I have been advised by the technical team that I need to iron this. Should make it easier. I got this bad boy. <laughs> got this iron heating up. Yeah. All ironed. I've made all my cuts uh, and ironed it out. I need to match the cross I made with this cross I made here and line up the edge of this small piece with this chalk line. You sew with the finished faces together and then I'm gonna pin down this edge to hold it together whilst we run the sewing machine down. I don't know much about sewing, but the basic idea is that you have a thread that starts up here, it threads through the machine and goes threads through this needle and goes underneath the foot and then when the needle goes down underneath the base you have another bobbin of thread in here that when the needle goes down it makes a little stitch and then pulls it back up again and does that over and over again. I've mentioned before that uh, I wanted to keep a one centimetre seam allowance and this little magnetic thing sticks to the sewing machine like that and then I can put the material up against it and keep the gap even all the way around. We've got the first stitch down, runs all the way along the edge. That's it from the other side. This is the next of the small squares and our fail safe of making sure the two triangles go together. 
has worked. We just have to make sure that the edges match up with these lines. This is one of the corners. I have a stitch, I believe is what is called a hem. There's a neat fold all the way around. That's all of it stitched up. We have a cube. I'll have to put it on the printer and then see if it fits. So this smiley fabric cover isn't actually a cube. I accounted for the filament spool at the back, so it's slightly longer. So this will only actually fit on two ways. You might wanna add something that indicates the front or the back. The sizing and the measurements of the fabric cover are a little bit big, you can obviously see that. Um, but that's actually not a bad thing because it's a lot easier to take on and off, especially when you have the screen and the spool at the back. Those things can catch on the fabric cover easily. Other than that, the way it looks, it's fine. It's nothing pretty, but it gets the job done. A bonus cover or enclosure for the P1P is this Vision Enclosure by Hume Beam. I really like this enclosure, mainly because it has see-through perspex on three of the sides, so you can see into the printer from all angles. It's also completely custom, so if you are able to, you could incorporate other design ideas into the frame, which is really neat. I actually nearly went with this enclosure option, but when I added up the cost of all the panels and hardware, it was pretty much getting towards buying a P1S upgrade kit, which leads me on to the third way of covering the printer. And it's so good. I've put on a shirt. It's a bit more expensive, but it provides some extra benefits uh, like a filter uh, and a complete enclosure rather than just a cover for when it's not being used. And if you haven't already guessed, it's to upgrade this to the P1S. So I just flipped open the uh, Bamboo Wiki and I've noticed that it says to print the air duct of the chamber temperature regulator before starting the upgrade. So that's put a halt on the works. It's kind of annoying they don't include it in the pile of upgrades because you paid money for it. So why should you have to print your own parts? But anyway, it recommends to print it in PETG. And luckily I do have some, but this is gonna be my first time using a filament other than PLA. I can already tell it's got a different smell to uh, the PLA and quite clearly it's a lot more flexible. Here it is. I need to get myself the so-called poop shoot. When I'm trying to clean it, in the bearings and along these shafts, I think there's lubricant, so you don't want to be wiping that dry and putting dust onto that. Whoa. This box is the new tool head cable. Now I just need to reinstall everything I just undid. This is what I've done to arrange the bolts. So this is the tool head cable and it's supposed to go down inside this hole, but I've put it around the outside. So I'm gonna have to take this off and thread it back down. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, I had to force that off, 
shit. I think it's alright. <laughs> way through the install uh, but it's getting late I have work the next day and I'm not sure where these screws came from so I'm gonna have to pack it in I wanted to get it done today and resume again tomorrow <sighs> it's a new evening I've got a new shirt on I've got my cup of tea I'm ready to uh, finish this off. I'm curious for all you Americans out there, do you boil your water in a kettle or in a microwave? That's my question. Anyway. I was confused earlier about which one of these bags came with the side panel, but it turns out they both did actually. Oh. Looking on the wiki, it actually goes this way up. That looks like it's on. So I believe this foam bit needs to go behind the metal frame and then the metal back panel will squish up against the rest of this foam. Ooh. I'm just gonna check that all the fans work. Part fan, auxiliary fan, chamber fan in the back here. All the fans are working, so I'm happy that I can put on the back plate, the top, the door, and finish it off. P1S. Yes. And there is a door. <laughs> There's a door. <laughs> Covered. <laughs> Covered and an enclosed P1S. Does look different now. Does look different. Was all of this just for some dust? <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. You get to enjoy the satisfying peel of the final piece of plastic. Yes! There's one more bit. Whoa, this looks fresh now. So that's it then. We've gone through three ways to cover the P1P. The first being a cheap and free way, a fabric cover. And now we're up to a fully enclosed printer. I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully that gave you some inspiration if you wanted to cover your printer. If you did enjoy, please like and subscribe. Stick some comments below. Give your suggestions if you've covered your printer in a different way. If you can think of anything else, fire them down. If you have any questions. Other than that, thanks for watching.